Oh, hi there. Just over a year ago, uh, we introduced our first major release of Quan Congress controller or Kick in short version 1.0. And today I'm super excited to talk about what goes into new version, new major version of Quan Congress controller Kick 2.0. My name is Victor Gamov and I'm a developer advocate here with Kong. And in this video, I will break down some of the notable features that we shipped with this new major release. So let's get to it. Kong Ingress Controller 2.0 is truly a major release. It includes a lot of changes that happen internally, things that I call internal beauty and things that will affect you as a user because it shipped some of the new functionality. So in this video, I'll break down three notable things that you can use today is UDP ingress, ability to watch multiple different namespaces and native support for Prometheus inside Clone Ingress controller. So let's break those down. Previously, in Kick 1.x, there was only ability to watch only one namespace or all namespaces in Kubernetes cluster. Uh, for many customers and many users, it was not a very uh, convenient thing to do because they need to deal with security and the, the, the distribution of rights, and there was not very straightforward ways how to customize and watch only specific namespaces. In Kick 2.0, we introduce ability to watch only specific namespaces for changes for the plugins, for cluster plugins, for ingresses and all these kind of things. So let's take a look how does it look like and how we can make use of it. Now in this demonstration we're going to be using Helm charts, official Helm charts to install Kong. But before we start I want to show you some little quick thing that will be useful for you. First of all let's add a repository where we have our Kong Helm charts. We need to update our local cache in case of there would be some updates and things like that. So uh, we do that. As you can see, I have a bunch of other things except Kong, but we're going to be using this for installing Kong. Next thing is that there is a very handy command called Helm Show that allows me to see all possible values from this particular Helm chart. And result of this command, I will save in the YAML file, so we'll be able to modify it and after that apply to my installation. So let's take a look at this file. Uh, there is a plenty of things that you can do. Everything uh, with regards of uh, deployment of Kong, deployment of other components like admin API, about uh, deploying some external things like UTP proxy. I will show you in a couple of minutes how we can do that. Plugins and other things. But in this particular case, I'm interested in configuring of ingress controller. There is a parameter that allows me to tell which namespaces I want to watch. In this particular case, I will be interested in, let's say, UDP ingress example. That's namespace that I'm going to be using next when I will show you UDP ingress. So let me put this here and deploy with this configuration. Quang ingress controller will be listening events that will be happening in this namespaces with regards to Quang custom components. So let's install this Helm chart with name Kong to namespace Kong and Kong slash Kong is my Helm chart. We also need to provide the values uh, that I just modified in order this to, to work. As you can see here, I now face the error that UDP ingress namespace was not created. So let me create this namespace. My installation won't fail. And also let me quickly remove leftovers from previous step. So next thing that I'm installing, same thing. And uh, my Kong ingress controller require a few seconds to come up. Now, Kong ingress controller up and running and listening all things like ingress services and points, TCP ingress, UDP ingress, custom resources. So all good. So the next thing is that we need to deploy this custom resource. So in this particular case, I will just deploy using my command KAF, which is alias for Kube control apply. And I deploy this UDP ingress example. We're going to talk about this in a few seconds. But for now, for this demonstration, I want to show you that Kong ingress controller was able to detect the appearance of this resource or emergence of this resource. And after that, we'll try to do something. There's some warnings and errors because service is not available, but we'll fix this very, very soon. Now, you can also add multiple namespaces here. Just use uh, comma separated namespaces that you expecting your services and your ingresses and your plugins will be deployed. So, Kong Ingress Controller 
will be listing them. And after that, do not forget to do a Helm upgrade in order to apply those changes. But also you can remove those things if you want to Quon Congress controller to listen everything. Okay, now you have it. Now you know how you can tell Quon Congress controller to watch only specific namespaces. Historically, ingress object allows to proxy HTTP or HTTPS traffic. However, Kong ingress controller supported TCP ingress inside Kong and inside Kong ingress controller since version 0.8. In Kong Gateway 2.2, we introduced support for UDP protocol and allow to users in uh, audio, video, streaming use cases, uh, fintech, gaming to use this protocol and proxy uh, this traffic. You can also use all the plugins that we have also for TCP and UDP protocols. In Kick 2.0, we debut of UDP Ingress custom resource to support this UDP protocol inside your Kubernetes. So let's take a look how does it look like and how you can use this in your application. For this demonstration, we're going to be using another version of my quote service that will be exposing a Rick and Morty quotes for UDP port. We're going to be using a Java Faker library and we're going to be using Project Reactor server to create UDP server. For each and every request that we receive through UDP port, we'll be sent a Rick and Morty quote. We will deploy this application into UDP ingress example. You can use my image that we already created and we will deploy this into my kubernetes cluster this server will expose a port 9990 and this port will be listening UDP protocol for this deployment we also provide a service so this application will be addressable within kubernetes and last but not least we also will have a special custom resource definition or custom resource UDP ingress that will be attached to this UDP service that's my quote service that's my port and this port Kong will be using to listen in common connection. So let's configure this in Kubernetes. I will be using Helm to install Kong. We will be using Kong release name. And uh, we're going to be using Helm chart Kong Kong. And we install this in Kong namespace. We're waiting a few seconds until the external IP address will be available for us. In order to use a UDP we also need to configure one UDP listener inside Kong. So let me show you how we can do that. In my values.yaml file that I will be using to upgrade my installation, I need to enable a couple things. So I need to enable a UDP proxy and I need to specify which port Kong needs to be listening. And uh, in this case, Kong Ingress Controller and Helm Charts will produce service and the service will have a type of load balancer and the Kubernetes will be able to provide us external IP address for this. Let's uh, configure this. We have external address for port 80 and for ports 443. That's only for HTTP workloads. I'm using my values YAML file in order to do upgrade. And now we see new type of service uh, start coming up. We will use this external IP address to connect to this service. While it's starting up, let's explore UDP ingress namespace what we have here. So we do have our pod that run my application that my UDP quote service. Next, see, I do have my service. As you can see here, it uses a port 9990 as UDP. And another thing is UDP ingress. This UDP ingress uh, will be handled by Kong and we will be able to get access to this application. We're going to be using Netcat in order to communicate to this. And that's external IP address that I need to connect to in order to get the quotes. And when I start hitting enter, I'm starting getting quotes from my UDP service. All right, now you have it. Now you know how you can enable UDP support using UDP ingress. Many customers make use of uh, Prometheus plugin for Kong that captures all the metrics and publish those metrics 
in Prometheus and uh, displays this in the Grafana dashboard. But also customers wanted to know about the health of Kong Ingress controller itself, or maybe some of them want to know how long it takes to apply configuration. It's a very useful thing to know if you have a lot of plugin configured, maybe some of the complex ingress configurations and so far and so on. So in this version of Kong Ingress controller, we introduce native support for Prometheus to store health data there. So let me show you how does it look like. Now, when my application and my Kong Ingress controller are deployed, it's time to take a look on some of the monitoring capabilities available. So in this particular case, I already have installed Prometheus stack in my monitoring namespace and I expose my Grafana UI uh, using port forwarding to my local host so we can take a look. Next, we need to enable this in um, Helm chart values file so Kong Ingress controller will expose some of those metrics. So there's a section about the service monitor that allows to Prometheus to scrap the pods. And in this particular case, we just need to specify a release name of my Helm release of my Prometheus stack. So let's take a look how it looks like. So if you run Helm LS uh, in the namespace of monitoring, you will see there is a Prometheus stack already deployed. If you're interested in how we can do that, I will put some links in the description below so you can see how you can install it yourself. Now, in a documentation for uh, Prometheus metrics, this is specifically with regards of Kong Ingress controller configurations and all these metrics that are available here that you can monitor. And if you go to Grafana to make sure that you are using the Prometheus as your database. And after that, if you go into Explore tab of Grafana, you can find Ingress controller metrics through Metrics Browser. And all this configuration push count, configuration translation count, and configuration push duration, but these metrics are available here you can put it in your uh, dashboard so since uh, kong ingress controller 2.0 relies on some of the low level frameworks to integrate with uh, kubernetes api this framework also provides some of the metrics specifically control and runtime metric provides some of the information that might be in use uh, for your monitoring and you can go ahead and look around what kind of metrics are available through this framework and we also will see this if we try to explore those metrics in our controller tab. So there is no ready to use Grafana dashboard at this moment, but we're looking to add those capabilities to official Kong Grafana dashboard that you can find in a Grafana website. And as you can see here, this is just a count of how many times this configuration was pushed. All right, so now you have it. Now you know how you can monitor health of your Kong Ingress controller deployment. Hopefully this will help you to run this smoothly in your production. As I mentioned earlier, Kong Ingress Controller 2.0 is a major release, meaning that there would be some breaking changes and you need to know those. We prepared the list of the things that you need to know if you're migrating from the previous version of the Kong Ingress Controller or if you do fresh installation, you need to know requirements of your Kubernetes cluster. You can find those links below. All the things that I discussed with you today will be user focusing the functionality, but uh, there are some many changes that happened internally. For example, now Quark Ingress Controller uses KubeBuilder as a standard framework to interact with Kubernetes API. If you have any specific questions about implementations or you want to learn how Quark Ingress Controller will make use of KubeBuilder, I highly encourage you to join Quark Slack channel in Kubernetes Slack. You can find the link below. All right, if you found this video useful or at least entertaining, please consider subscribing. And with this, my name is Victor Gamov and as always, have a nice day.